Welcome to Watch Symposium. I'm Austin. Let's talk about unpolished watches and what I look for when I'm trying to determine whether or not a piece has been polished. Now, as you may know, I have a fascination with virginal unpolished pieces. They're kind of hard to find here in Japan. And so in that sense, they're special. If you're looking for a five-digit model, a four-digit model, a vintage model, neo-vintage model, then this is a skill you're going to want to have. Some people would say it's a fixation. Others would say it's an unhealthy fixation. And I think they may be right. And so use these skills for the forces of good. I don't want it to affect your appreciation of your existing watches or to denigrate other people's pre-owned watches. All right. If I have a friend and he gets a pre-owned watch, I would never ask him whether it was polished or not. All right. Also, sometimes I'm looking at my friend's watches under the loop and I can see they're a little bit nervous. They're kind of on the edge of their seat. I think they're afraid I'm going to look up and say, by the way, man, this has been polished. Okay, I wouldn't do that. I think that would be very rude. It would be like bringing up their wife's uh, physical appearance and being critical of it. All right, but you need to know these skills because just like marriage, before marriage, keep both eyes open after marriage, keep one eye shut. All right, same thing with watches. Before you pull the trigger on that piece, both eyes open. After the fact, keep one eye shut, enjoy the piece. And look, think of polishing as a continuum, all right? And there are some that haven't been polished and you know it because they came straight from the AD. Others, you can tell they're polished, you don't even need a loop, all right? And then there are pieces in the middle that maybe they've been polished once or maybe just part of the watch has been polished maybe a uh, cape cod cloth has been used i don't know if that counts or not but here's the thing when you're looking at a piece and you're having this sort of internal debate whether it's been polished or not you're probably overthinking it all right that means the lines are really good and you should probably step back and say good enough all right now let's get into it so let's start at the front of the watch and talk about the insert you want to ask yourself does it have an original insert number one because you want the original insert but also if it's got a service insert although that might be authentic it's gonna indicate that it was at rsc at some point and if it was at rsc it likely had an rsc polish all right so you want an original insert you can see from the fat four this is original if it had a sharp four, well, I'd have to ask myself, how did that happen, all right? And that could have been a service. Also, if it's got the sticker on the back, that's a good sign because sometimes stickers come off during services. And again, a non-service piece is probably what you're looking for because servicing is when polishings happen, all right? And a dirty piece is another thing that can be actually a good thing. And I'm going to upload another video after this and you'll see the state of this watch, how dirty it was when I got it and, and the bracelets on it. And we'll go through the bracelet as well. Um, but uh, this was a dirty watch. And so that's actually a good thing because during services, watches are cleaned and they're also polished. All right. Okay. So looking at the lugs, you want to make sure they are symmetrical and even. And I've always heard that the lugs on the crown side are a little bit thinner to keep the watch balanced weight-wise. All right, so keep that in mind. And look at the other side. Make sure they are balanced and even looking. Look at the brush strokes. They should be circular brush strokes. You wanna make sure that this edge here is sharp because oftentimes, when the polishing wheel is polishing uh, this polished part on the outside, it hits the bottom part, all right? So look at the this area, make sure that's nice and sharp. Now sometimes wear can be mistaken for polishing, all right? So be careful of that. A great thing to look at are the bottom of the crown guards, all right? So there's a circular brush pattern here, and then it transitions sharply here to a polished area, polished area, okay? 
And again, it should be a very, very sharp transition, a line, right? And when third party polishers polish these crown guards, that polishing bleeds over into this circular brushed part. And so you can see that on the bottom of the crown guards. You can also see it on the top because again, there's, there's the brushed part here that extends all the way over here. And then there's that line. So polished, polished. There should be a line here that's brushed, okay? So let me just get a good shot of that. Okay, another thing you can do is see how even the lugs are with a straight edge. Now, this would be a very strange thing to do at a watch shop. I guess you could. This is probably something you're going to do when you get home, but at that point, it's a little too late. Let's check out the other side. Now you can use the straight edge in this way and see how far the end of the lugs are from the straight edge. Unfortunately, the case back is big enough that I can't really get them flush to the, to the lugs. Now you're gonna wanna familiarize yourself with whatever model you're looking to get. And I encourage you to check out pictures on the internet. So we'll look at some pictures I found of an apparently unpolished 16600 and, uh, and use that to compare it to this piece. Now you can see that the crown guards are really even and on this side there's you know no sign of polishing. They're completely symmetrical. Okay, speaking of lugs, uh, that's a big thing you want to look at. Everybody focuses on the lugs as they should. Now what you have is a brushed part on the top. You have the facet or the bevel or the chamfer here that flares out, and this is polished. And then you have a polished part on the side, and you want to see a sharp transition from this brushed part to the polished part on the chamfer, okay? And third-party polishes, of course, if they're trying to brush this, well, that brushing will spill over onto the chamfer. Oftentimes, there will be no chamfer when they're done with it. And if they're trying to put the chamfer on it, then perhaps some of that polishing will get onto the brush part. So you want to see a sharp transition. You want to see it flare out. If you change one thing, then everything changes, all right? And so that's an important thing. You want to see a sharp transition from where the chamfer ends and this flat polished part starts, okay? And we can compare this with a picture I found on the internet, this side. This is the bottom left lug. This is the top left lug, and, and this lug has the most damage on it. A couple of pretty heavy duty dings there. And the top right lug. Okay, this is the top of the case, bottom of the case. As it gets polished, these get bigger and bigger, even when RSC does it. Here's the opposite side. Now, sometimes you'll see this area right here, and it kind of goes in a little bit. And I think that's wear from the bracelet. But you often see that on pictures of non-polished pieces. You can also look at the inside, all right? And just make sure it's symmetrical on each side. Let's turn it around. Again, bottom of the watch. All 
All right, guys, I think that'll do it. I've probably forgotten something. If you think I have, drop it in the comment section. But ideally, you want a piece that has had a minimal number of services, maybe one that's never had a service because services are when polishes happen. And so if you see something like replaced hands or replacement bezel insert, well, that could indicate a service. And lugs are key, all right? Be sure to look at the bottom of the lugs, the sides, the top of the lugs, the interior, and make sure they are even, they're balanced, they're symmetrical. Again, the ones on this side apparently are a little bit thinner. And make sure that this top part is brushed, that the chamfer is polished, it extends out, it flares out, and then this part is polished. Make sure there's a sharp transition between the top of the lug, the brush part, into the polished chamfer, and from the polished chamfer to the polished side of the case. There should be sharp transitions all around, and they should be on all of the lugs, okay? Again, wear can be mistaken for polishing. Also, light can play tricks as well. And uh, be sure to take note of the crown guards, the bottom of the crown guards, the top of the crown guards, okay? All, all these areas. And uh, look at a lot of pictures on the internet, compare and familiarize yourself with whatever model you are looking to get. Guys, let me know what you think. Take care. Thanks for watching. See you next time.